In chapter 11.6, we're going to talk about areas of circles, sectors, and segments. And I assume that you have already learned that the area of a circle is going to be the same as pi r squared, or is going to be equal to pi r squared. So we define a sector as the area, it's this little wedge here, or portion of an entire circle. And we define it as the area that's bound by the radii, two, uh, two radii, and its arc corresponding arc. So the way that we figure out the area of the sector, which is a portion of the circle, is we find the area of the measure of the arc, or the measure of the central angle, as a fraction of the total uh, angle measure of the circle, 360, and then we multiply that times the entire area of the circle. So a fraction of the circle times the area of the entire circle will give us the area of the sector. Now a segment is a little bit different than a sector. It's just the area bound by a chord, it's this outside piece here in blue, by a chord and its corresponding arc. So the area of a segment is equal to the area of the sector, so that large piece here, minus the area of this triangle in here. So let's talk about a couple of problems that use the formulas we've just used, learned for areas of sectors and segments. In this problem, we're asked to find the area of the shaded region in green. So the first thing we want to do, and we're given that the uh, tangent is 12 units, so we also know that this is 12 units, to the circle, it's 12 units to the circle. So we draw now our radius to the tangent. We know that that radius is going to form a right angle with the tangent. And then we draw from the center of the circle to the point of uh, where the two tangents meet outside the circle. And we've just created two congruent right triangles. I have 12 as one of the legs, 12 as one of the legs. I know that the central angle here corresponds to its arc here. So I know that the central angle is 120. So half of that is 60 degrees. And once again, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Well, if the side opposite the 60 degree uh, angle is 12, then the side opposite the 30 degree angle is going to be 12 divided by root 3. So let's just say for now, uh, we want to figure out what x is. We know that x root 3, x is going to be the side opposite the 30 degree angle. x root 3 is equal to 12. So we know x is equal to 12 over root 3. Now we have to rationalize the denominator in order to get rid of the radical. So we multiply both the numerator and denominator by root 3. And we're left with 12 root 3 over 3, which is the same as 4 root 3. So I can figure out the area of the shaded region. Let's just step back a second by taking the area of the two triangles and subtracting the sector. So I have now one of the bases, or x is equal to 4 root 3. And I know that the area of the two triangles is just going to be 1 half of the base, which is 4 root 3 times its height, which is 12, times 2. So 1 half times 2 equals 1. 4 root 3 times 12 is equal to 48 root 3. And that is the answer, or the area, of the two triangles. Now I need to subtract the sector. Well, I know that the sector, uh, the measure of the central angle is 120 degrees. So I know this sector is going to be one-third or 120 over 360 times the total area of the circle, which is going to be uh, f 4 root 3 squared pi. So I have 1 third, 4 squared is 16, times root 3 squared is going to be 48 pi, which is equal to 16 pi. So my answer then is going to be 48 root 3 minus 16 pi.
In the next problem, we're asked to find the area of the shaded region. In this case, it's not going to be the segment. It's everything but these two segments. So we're given the diameter is 12, which means that our radius is going to be 6, so I mark that here. And if I draw two more radii from the opposite sides of the chords, then I have two equilateral equiangular triangles. So I have 6, 6, and 6, 6, 6, and 6. I know that in an equiangular equilateral triangle that all the angles are equal to 60 degrees. So now I can figure out the measure of both the sector and also the area of this triangle. But first let's step back again and let's try to figure out what we're trying to accomplish. Well, I want to take the area of the circle and then I want to subtract the area of the segments. So the area of the circle, to find that, is pretty simple. It's just pi r squared. r is 6. So I'm left with 36 pi as the area of my circle. Now I want to figure out the area of my segment, and I want to subtract that. So the area of the segment is going to be the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. So let's figure out the sector area. Well, I have a 60 degree angle here. So I know that the area of this sector is going to be 1 sixth of 36 pi, which equals 6 pi. Now I want to subtract the area of the triangle. And I can figure that out pretty easily because once again I have a 30-60-90 triangle. I know that this chord length is 6, so this particular chord is bisected by this height or the altitude. And so I know that the altitude is 3 root 3. So side opposite 30 degree is 3, side opposite 60 degree is the side opposite 30 times root 3, 3 root 3. So in order to find the area of the triangle, I have one half the base, which is one half of six, or three, times three root three, and I'm left with nine root three as the area of the segment. So now I want to subtract two of these, right? So I multiply these by two, and I'm left with 12 pi minus 18 root 3. So I subtract now 36 minus the two segments, 36 minus 12 pi minus 18 root 3. And as it distribute the negative, this value becomes positive in the end. So I end up with 24 pi plus 18 root 3 as the area of this internal portion of the uh, circle, and again excluding the different segments. In the next problem, 21a, we're asked to find the area of the shaded region in green and also the area of the triangle. Well, the area of the triangle is pretty easy, so let's find that first. We have a base of 10 and a height of 24, or a base of 24 and a height of 10. We know the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height, so I have one half of 10 times 24, and that is equal to 120. Now, the way that we find the area of the shaded region, we have uh, a bunch of semicircles here. What we want to do is we want to find the area of the semicircle with a radius of 12. We want to add it to the semicircle with a radius of 5. Now, we realize here that we have actually a 5, 12, 13 triangle, so we know that this particular uh, diameter is 26, so my radius is 13 here. So we want to take these two smaller semicircles, here's a medium and a smaller, and subtract the larger semicircle. And because we've subtracted this triangle, we have to add it back in because we didn't really want to subtract in the first place. We just wanted to subtract these two smaller regions. Okay, so let's put that down on a piece of paper, or another piece of paper. 
we want the area of the smaller semicircle uh, plus the area of the medium semicircle minus the area of the larger semicircle. Then we want to add back in the area of the triangle. So we recall that the uh, radius of the smaller semicircle was 5. So I have 1 half of pi times 5 squared, which is equal to 12.5 pi. Area of the medium circle is 1 half pi times 12 squared, which is equal to 72 pi. And the area of the larger circle is 1 half pi times 13 squared. 13 squared is 169, and we take half of that, so it's 84 pi. And then we want to add back in the area of the triangle, because we didn't really want to take that in the first place. It never really belonged to those areas that we were trying to subtract. But we had to uh, take it out initially because we were given the area. It's easy to find the area of that larger semicircle. So if I have 12 and a half pi plus 72 pi, I have 84 and a half pi. And I subtract uh, 84 pi from that, I'm left with half a pi plus 120. Excuse me, I actually made a mistake here because the area of the larger semicircle is 84.5 pi. So I have 80, uh, 72 pi plus 12.5 pi minus 84 pi leaves me with zero and I add 120 back. So interestingly enough, the area of these two shaded regions is the same as the area of the triangle. 